Hey guys, gals, and my non-gender conforming pals. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrington, and if you're new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. So, for today's video, I'm going to talk about ColourPop and the pandemic. And you're probably thinking like, Carrington, what are you talking about? So, before I even start saying anything, I just want to say I love ColourPop. I have a large drawer full of just ColourPop shadows. I've got most of their complexion products. I've got blushes. I've got all their collabs. I literally just bought the Candyland collection and I thought that was like such a great collection. It was so nostalgic. I loved it. But there are some things that we kind of need to talk about, especially with ColourPop releasing as much as they are. I get that they still need to make money. They still have people that they need to pay. But what about their consumers? So first let's start off with just talking about the pandemic in general. So right now, and I've got some statistics written down, I made little notes. I feel like smoky glow <laughs> right now with all my little notes. Okay, so according to marketplace.org, as of August 6th, all people receiving some form of unemployment benefits is north of 31 million people. Wow, that's a lot of people in the United States without jobs currently. In February, before the pandemic, 158 million Americans had jobs. Now, one sixth of those 58 million no longer have jobs. That's insanity. So most of these people are either completely on unemployment, so they're currently seeking other jobs, they're being furloughed from their jobs, they are waiting to be called back or they are working part time waiting for their full time status to come back or to find a job that's full time status. That is a lot of people. And there was a CARES Act in place, but it no longer provides the 600 additional dollars. That ended July 31st and the last day you could apply for the CARES Act benefit was as of July 25th. So now, People are still on unemployment, but I did some of my own research for the state that I'm in. I'm in the state of Missouri. Both me and my husband are still working. I work one full-time job, he works a full-time job, and I work a part-time job so that I have money for YouTube and stuff like that. And you're probably wondering how I got my numbers, that you can go to the website and like plug in how much you make, how many hours you're working or were working or not working anymore, and see how much you would make. So, I make over $10 an hour at my job. I'm not gonna say how much more or anything like that. And my husband makes much more than I do. When I put in both of our numbers, we both are only going to make $320 a week on unemployment. For example, I just did in some math of somebody making, let's say $13 an hour. So let's say they were making $13 an hour for 40 hours for four, for four weeks. That would be making $2,200 a month, roughly. Of course, you know, taxes and things like that are going to come out. If someone were to be on unemployment that made that, they would be making at most $1,200 a month. Now, the government says probably not going to take $1,000 out of taxes. So, you're not going to be making around $1,200. You probably are going to be making around $1,800, $1,700. That's $500 less a month that you would be making. How are people going to afford their mortgage? I know like just paying my mortgage, I wouldn't have a lot left. There's probably like a lot of people that will not have stuff left. <clears throat> so people are struggling and makeup is a hot commodity. Makeup is a billion dollar industry. People love makeup. I love makeup. If you're watching this, you probably love makeup. So the question is, well, what does ColourPop have to do with this pandemic? And the thing is, when the pandemic first started, they did cut down on what they were producing. I think during the whole pandemic, what the freckle pen came out may have been the only thing or in the tie dye palettes. I feel like that was, that was a good idea. If you only had three eyeshadow palettes or $12 to eat each, if you had any extra cash, you know, buy that. The freckle pen was $8 and I personally love the freckle pen. I have the freckle pen. 
<clears throat> but now that we're up and going, we still have 31 million people on unemployment, probably more. But now ColourPop is back to releasing collections, whole collections every single week. And the part that's saddening about this is that most people aren't going to be able to afford one, even one whole collection. But when you're coming out with things like, let's say the Sailor Moon restock, Mulan restock, Candyland came out, Ray of Sunshine came out, Wild Nothing, Garden Variety, this could come out week after week. And let's say somebody's sitting there looking at it and they're like, well, what should I buy? Sailor Moon sold out. Mulan, I'm not sure if that's still available. I think it was still available when I checked. But for some of these collections, by the time somebody was like decides what collection they want for that month, it may already be gone. And some people want the whole collection. Some people really like how they put stuff together, maybe like a little bit more monochromatic or have a theme to it. So they kind of all go together. So your complexion looks like it's put together. And no one's going to be able to buy that. I bought, I mean, I have obviously bought some stuff, but again, I'm working a full-time job and a part-time job. Not a lot of people are doing that right now. And a lot of people are buying out the ColourPop collections. They are going fast on ColourPop. Like the Wild Nothing, none of the blushes are available. Same with the lip oils, same with the garden variety, no blushes, no lip oils. It's just, the people are just grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. But then what about the people, the 31 million that we're not thinking about? And so I think really ColourPop needs to kind of just slow it down and really kind of think about all of their consumers. And I get it, money hungry, that's part of their job. Some people love it. But I'm gonna be honest, I have not really seen a lot of YouTubers or people in my everyday life who's like, oh man, I love that ColourPop comes out with a collection every single month. It's just not very realistic. So what I think is that ColourPop should maybe go down to maybe once a month. Just have like one big collection once a month. Granted, they are affordable. They are cheaper products. So like the Candy Lane collection was like $118. If you got the board game, it was $145. And that's not bad. And you can use codes. So like Ally Glines has a code. Um, Manny MUA has a code. There's lots of people that have a code that you can use that will help bring some of your total down. And that's nice and everything. But just doing that week after week, $100 collections, that's $400. If you're on unemployment or trying to save money because you don't know if you're going to be laid off or if you're going to get COVID or if someone in your house is going to get COVID and you need to quarantine, or if the school's closed down and now suddenly you have to leave your job to make sure your kids are homeschooled. These are things that really need to be taken into account. And I don't think ColourPop is doing that. I think ColourPop is taking into account what can we produce that people will buy that will keep giving us money. Another thing is they used to ship by USPS. I used to get my packages by USPS. Now they're being shipped by DHL. So I have placed a ColourPop order on August 21st. I purchased the Little Ray of Sunshine in the Mulan collection that same day. It still has not gotten to me and it is not expected to make it to me until Saturday. That is over two weeks that it is taking for me to get those products. That is such a long time. And the sad part is by the time, two weeks later, by the time you've got one of your collections, you either got a restock of something that you were wanting or you've got two more collections coming out. I just think that either provide faster shipping or slow down on the collections. And honestly, for people such as me that's on YouTube who doesn't get PR from ColourPop, now, by the time we get, so two weeks later, after it was restocked and the Little Ray of Sunshine co has come out, you know, the people that have lived close, got their packages and are able to film 
or got PR so got it before it was going to come out and was able to film. By the time I get my package, or anybody else that's a small influencer such as me, when are you going to have time to film that where people are going to be like, yeah, this is exciting. I haven't seen anything like this because at this point, all the major influencers have already done a video. So now you've seen everything you need to see and you've made your purchasing decisions and you're moving on. That's not exciting anymore. But we just spend our money on it. It's not like some of the smaller influencers have money to throw around. I know you're thinking, well, you work a part-time job. I don't, I work 15, 20 hours a week, maybe. Some weeks I work five, depending on what my hours are at my other job. And that's it. So it's not like I'm getting like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And neither are probably some of the other YouTubers. I personally do this because I enjoy it. I'm not, I would like to have a following, but I don't think I need 1 million subscribers. If I ever get to 1 million subscribers because people enjoy me, that would be awesome. But I would think like 10,000 would be pretty cool or 30,000. I think that would be pretty cool. But a lot of people don't have the money to throw around. So I just think that these are things that ColourPop really needs to take into consideration. I know there are other brands that are coming out with kind of a lot of things. I know BH Cosmetics has released a little bit. But again, BH Cosmetics has re released, here's an eyeshadow palette for $10. Here's a blush palette for $12. Here's a highlighter palette. And it's not like in the same week. You know, it may be one every two weeks. And then you could be like, oh, you know, I'm not really into sh eyeshadow palettes right now. So I can skip over this. Or... You know, this blush palette doesn't really speak to me. I need something with darker tones or I need something with lighter tones or I already have 50 million blush palettes. I don't need 50 million and one blush palettes. But ColourPop is just like, here's blush, here's lips, here's eyeshadow, here's a freckle pen, here's this, here's that, all in your collection. And now it's like, do I need all these? Do I not? I have to hurry up and make my decision before it goes out of stock. And I just wonder how many of you are in a grant that right now during a pandemic, ColourPop should maybe kind of take a second, take a breather, and be like, hey, let's either release a couple things, one or two things every week, or wait to release collections once a month. I think that's more fair, and I think that is fair to the customers as well as people trying to make a business by reviewing their products. So that's all I have to say on this video. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments. I love having conversations with people. Um, just let me know what you think and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.